Well, mate, we're just about to sort up another week in the bag, mate. Another week in the bag. So it is. Here's one for you, mate. I was at um, Ashton Shops, right, the other day, just getting some groceries in. Yeah. And uh, there was this bloke playing a didgeridoo. Oh, but we had for Ashton, but anyway, he was playing a didgeridoo, and he was playing Dancing Queen. And I thought to myself, that's Aboriginal. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll uh, like that one? I'm original. <laughs> <laughs> well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's Friday night again. Feel so good Friday. Feel good Friday. Uh, another Yonder Mountain podcast. Uh, Very exciting. It always is, Simon, isn't it? Always is. What is it we're talking about this week? Well, let me tell you, Toffee Head. Please do. This week, we're going to be talking about sad. Sad. Sad, mate. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> sad act. No, we're not on about sad okay, act. On. We're on about SAD, mm. which stands for Seasonal Effectiveness Disorder. And, mate, it is a very real thing, and it affects... So many people, more, many more than we would ever imagine. And I know I get loads of people talking to me about this at work. Um, and um, thankfully, I'm in a position whereby I can offer some tips on how to deal with it. So we thought we're getting to that time of year now for sure. Yeah, yeah. We're going to talk a little bit about what it is. Yeah. What else are we going to be talking about on this one? Well, exactly that. What it is, uh, how it affects people, and I suppose how to manage it, how to cope mm-hmm. with it. Now, I think this is one of these things that prior to uh, probably five minutes ago, I haven't even heard of this topic, but I think it's definitely something I suffer from because this time of year, sort of heading into uh, October, November, even actually September this year was equally as crap in terms of the wow. weather, I have noticed my mood being on the floor purely because it's miserable it's cold it's so grey and dark oh, in the mornings and that just dictates your mood immediately oh, it does it? what did you say at work the other day mate we were in the canteen having my usual banter and um, you said do you know what it's just bloody miserable you're going to make a point next year of trying to get two weeks in Spain oh, without doubt yeah. no. I, I recognise the pattern here that I'm feeling dreadful this time of year and just get away somewhere oh. because it is shocking isn't it the, oh. way, the way it is at the minute absolutely even as we're speaking it's been miserable dear. the weather's been terrible we yeah. said it earlier on didn't we yeah oh, absolutely yeah, yeah it's a big deal so I guess the uh, I guess the first question is well, what is it? What, what what exactly is SAD? What is it and how does it affect people? So like I said, SAD stands for Seasonal Affective Disorder. So the first part of it is seasonal. So that probably gives a hint as to we we'll have changes in seasons and it has an impact on the human physiology, the human body and the human brain uh, as well. Um, we were talking about, we've mentioned it on a couple of podcasts so far, have more about what being what chemical factories and all of this type of thing, uh, and um, that a lot of these chemicals, good, you know, the positive ones or not positive ones, are dictated by light levels. Well, of course, on the 27th of October, the clocks change again. Well, of course, what that means is you're waking up in the morning and it's pitch black, you're finishing work at five, half past five, six, whenever, and it's pitch black. We're getting into winter and the weather's naff, you know, all of these different things. And what it does is it just makes you feel very Mm lacklustre and it makes you feel like you've got a depressed mood. Yeah. Um, The the, the feel-good chemicals serotonin and dopamine are being suppressed that little bit more. And uh, people are feeling a little bit more stressed, more cortisol, which is the stress chemical. Light levels have dipped and it just feels dreadful yeah. and it affects a lot of people. Yeah, it, it, this is one that must be a lot more common than, than people know. People, people probably haven't heard of the the terminology. Aye. They just think, oh, it's that time of year, it's drab, it's dreary. But actually, yeah. it, 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 you know, it's a real thing, isn't it? It's a real thing which affects pretty much all of us. It's a very, very real thing. A very real thing. <clears throat> and if it's the type of thing where you're wondering... Like, do I suffer from this or not? Because a lot of people actually, mate, think it's got nothing to do with the seasons. They just think 
something's wrong. Mm. They may think there's something wrong. Yeah. yeah. Uh, am I depressed? You know, am I anxious? And what's happening with us? I don't feel like I normally feel. End up going to the doctors, and sometimes the, the diagnosis is seasonal affective disorder. Yeah. You know, so it happens. It happens a lot. If you're wanting to watch out for any symptoms, um, just so that you've got a little bit of a heads up, and then you can gauge whether it's something that you experience or not. And like you were saying right at the start there, Toffee, uh, thanks for sharing that. You know, and it just goes to show, you know, we're all the same, aren't we? Mm. You know, it's something that you weren't totally aware of before, you know, but it's something that is very, very real to you, you know. So watch out for, here's the kind of, here's five or six things to watch out for. So the first one is definitely a lack of energy. Like you were saying there, mate, that lacklustre effect. You, you feel that. Yeah, lack of motivation. I, I think it's maybe a couple of things. It obviously links in with the, the seasonal side of it. There's almost that element of the finishing lines in sight. We're near the end of the year. And I think subliminally, that just, for me anyways, just makes me feel like, oh, I've just ran out of gas in the tank. Here. Aye, aye. Just get through the end of this year. I'm we'll spent. Start again next year. Eh? Crawl across the finish line. But yeah, I feel certainly that's how I feel this time of year anyways, definitely. Aye, absolutely. Yeah, that's a big one. Lack of energy, big style, big style. Um, uh, difficulty concentrating, mm. you know, that is another big one. Um, when you haven't got as much serotonin in your body, it yeah. changes the way that your brain operates, and you have difficulty concentrating on things. You know, your brain might you be having a conversation and then you forget what you've just been saying, or you don't know where you've put the car keys. Or whatever, this lack of concentration is definitely a big one. Mm. One, one of the one of the main one. Mate, this this next one has a huge knock-on effect for people, and that be, being the feeling of being isolated. Mm. You don't want to see other people. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Not having the the kind of enthusiasm to go and meet your pals or go and see family members, and being invariably stuck in the house where we know what that feels like, don't we? No, yeah, yeah. absolutely, uh, absolutely dreadful. Feeling sad, mm. like actually feeling sad. Um, feeling quite low. Some people even get very, very tearful mm. and, you know, might not be quite sure why. I mean, it might be other things. You know, for example, menopause certainly brings on things like that. Manopause. We're going to be talking about these on other mm. uh, episodes, by the way. Um, but, um, you know, if you're feeling depressed anyway, sometimes you might be tearful, but it's something to watch out for, for sure. Um, last week's podcast was about sleep. Yep. Mm. hopefully you found that one interesting ladies and gentlemen um, and the seasonal affective disorder impact on that you either sleep too much or you sleep too little and that's yeah, well, as we found out is a big deal yeah, well you're right linking in with that one last week do you know what no matter how much good night's sleep you have when you wake up in the morning and it's dull as out outside how much more miserable of an experience isn't it you know getting out oh. of bed it's cold it's dark it's yeah. just grim, isn't it? Yeah. Um, you, you know, it's a really nice. miserable time of year. Absolutely, yeah, it, re- it really is. It really is. Um, watch out for changes to your appetite as well. Mm. That's a big one, you know, uh, comfort eating, you know, uh, either eating too much or actually you just can't be bothered to eat. You're not yeah. eating enough and it has a knock-on effect to the, to your mood and also to your phys- physiology as well. Mm. Um, sex drive, mate? Uh, you know, speak for yourself, yeah. <laughs> I, I, he's full mass most of the time, um, <laughs> but it does, it does, it does affect your sex drive, mate. Mm. Uh, I mean, now two red, red blooded blokes like me and you, mate, oh, are pretty alright in that department. However, um, all joking aside, it does, it does impact on your libido as well. Mm. Um, basically, um, I, it's just suppressed and you just can't be bothered. Which can have a knock on effect, you know, no seriousness, relationship issues and yeah, yeah. all of that type yeah, of thing. Yeah. You know, and obviously there's um there's things. I mean that's just a few. That's just a few. But generally, the whole change in seasons, the change of the clocks really gives you that quite suppressed feeling. Yeah. And if you're not aware of it, hopefully now you are, because you're not alone. You're not alone. Yeah. We'll all feel it. Yeah, well, this is literally one of these subjects where, yeah, we're all in this boat, aren't we? Like, it, oh, it, it, literally. Yeah, there's no avoiding it. Everyone is feeling these same effects. Of, every year. Of, of what every year. Like. Yeah, absolutely. So we've talked enough there saying so, you know, what it is and how dreadfully miserable the country <laughs> is and the state of affairs and all the rest of it. <laughs> Give us some positivity in the same. How do we cope with it? What's the best way to manage uh, with seasonal effectiveness disorder? Well, my little mate self-care is uh, is really really important 
Um, and I think one of the big things, I'm a big advocate for this. You are as well, mate. Yeah. We're um, mental health first aiders at work. I'm a menopause champion, dementia friend, and various other things as well, specialised in vulnerability. The list goes on. But you've got to reach out. You've got to be able to talk to people. Mm-hmm. Sharing, you know, having these kind of conversations to make you feel like you're not alone. You're not alone. Yeah. But reaching out and talking to somebody about it, and even if you feel like you're on your own, you're not alone, there's always somebody to speak to, you know. Um, we've got um, uh, the Yonder Mountain uh, Adventures Facebook community, yep. which is going great guns, isn't it, mate? It is, and, and that's a good space, isn't it, where there's like-minded people all sharing, again, positivity, getting out there, doing what helps them relax, be at peace with themselves, yeah. all the rest of Absolutely. it, is a key part of this, isn't it? Huge, huge. It's a, it's a great place to be. The link's in the video description, guys. Um, and do share your thoughts in the comments section. Get the chat going as well. Sharing your story and talking to people is the first step to self-care, for yeah. sure. Um, I always find... Now, this might or might not be your bag, like... But keep a diary. Mm, it's important okay. to keep a diary. Because if you keep a diary, it means that you're getting something from your brain onto a bit of paper. It's gone from the intangible to the tangible. And you can actually see... Make a diary in as much as, right, at such and such time, I was feeling this. At such and such, I didn't have me dinner. I was doing that. But what I did do and made us feel good was take Timmy, Timmy Dog for a walk yeah. or go and see your mum and dad or whatever. Yeah. Keep a diary because it's a good way of documenting your feelings and also you'll be able to see if there's some kind of pattern Aye. as well. That is, um, that's a really important one, keeping a diary. I don't know, if, have you ever kept a diary before, mate? Uh, no, not, not really my style, that one, a diary, no. but, but I can understand how putting it down there, I think what I quite like to do, it's probably the equivalent, but sort of uh, a lazier version of keeping a diary, is I like to just decompress, and all, sometimes even just talk to yourself, what have I done the day, just like, just sort of put it out there, so that, what, in the mirror? mirror? To the mirror, I'll, have a, I'll be right up against the mirror, <laughs> um, right. having a good word with myself, and sometimes I think, you know, just putting it out there, usually speaking to my wife, or, or you Part, oh. your partner in your scenario or whatever yeah. it might well be yeah. put it out there about what your partner done <laughs> <laughs> double D double D <laughs> <laughs> put it out there about what is going on at the minute What? how are you feeling and, and just sometimes airing that does help doesn't it it, ab- it absolutely does absolutely does um, ways to relax you've got to be able to relax now your style of relaxation may be you do some meditation Mm-hmm. It's something we're going to cover in another topic. Mindfulness yep. and meditation, really powerful stuff, really powerful stuff. So you might be meditating. It might be being out in nature. Prescription nature, guys, it works every time. We're big advocates advocates of it on this channel, as you well know. Go for a walk, change of scenery. Um, it could well be something like yoga. It could well be, you know, reading a book or plugging into your favourite podcast, for example. <laughs> Possibly not shameless one. plug <laughs> shameless plug um, or whatever it is that you do to unwind and decompress yep. go wild camping I know the weather will not be great but something like that you know even if it's take the car out and boil yourself up a brew out the back of your car I don't care what it is that you do to relax but you've got to relax for the, without a doubt yep. and I think probably one of the the last one I'll mention, I think, because this is a big one, is a connection between your brain and your body. Mm-hmm. And if you've got a strong, fit and healthy brain and mindset and mood, you've probably got a strong, fit and, um, and, and positive physical health as well. The two are interlinked. And when there's a dip in one, there's a dip in the other. Yeah. So if you're feeling low mood, try and do something a little bit, little bit more physical. I'm not talking about running marathons here or, you know, doing going to a CrossFit session, you know, and knocking doors out of windows. You know, go for a walk. Go for a walk. Get the um, get the blood pumping a little bit. Yeah. You know, um, it releases endorphins. It releases the feel-good chemicals and it combats, you know, all of the bad weather and the doom and gloom as also it seems and feels at the time. Yeah. Do something physical. You might want to add of that. Do some push-ups, do some sit-ups, go for a walk, go for a light run. Um, whatever it is, mate, whatever yeah, it is. I think you're bang on the money there. I think just doing something different to sort of break the the habit 
isn't mm. it? Of you know, I think we spoke about this a couple of weeks ago now about especially this time of year when it's dark and when it's cold and when it's usually raining. It's very easy to get yourself in a slump of doing work, coming home, sitting in front of the telly for four hours, having your tea, and going to bed Aye. on repeat for three months, but all, all of this all time of year, isn't it? All all winter, winter. Yeah, yeah. And it, you know, you, it's easier said than done, of course, don't get me wrong, but the sooner you can recognise that trend and break it, the better. Uh, Absolutely. And I think you bang on. Yeah, yeah. You, you know, yeah. Chuck it down, you can't be bothered to go for a walk, you don't want to get yourself soaked. Aye. Get do, some, do some sit ups, do, do something, something. something that's going to give some sort of positivity to doesn't, your life. Doesn't yeah. matter. And you know what? Even if it is absolutely pissing down, stick your raincoat on and mm. do go for a little bit of a walk. The mm. sound of the pitter patter of the rain on the top of, on the top of your jacket, you know, and the rain water on your face and the yeah. wind and all of these different things will definitely help. Yeah. Like, will definitely help. 100%. 100%. And you know what? Try and, uh, try and inspire yourself but inspire others to do these things as well. Yeah. Because we're all in this together, man. You know, and if we can do something that makes us feel better, but it inspires somebody else to do something better, if you can reach out to somebody, it releases that oxytocin. Remember that love chemical? It gives you that human bond, you know. And there's something really powerful about an act of kindness. If you recognise that somebody is struggling with seasonal affective disorder, Reach out, give them a call, take them for a coffee. You know, try and avoid alcohol if you can. It's a it's a temporary stimulant, but we all know it's a depressant. It's not going to help for sure. A couple of pints here or there where I know no worries, but you know, try not to. Oh, it's, it's awful outside. I'll tell you what, we'll just go on the lash. Try and try and avoid it. Yeah, yeah. There's loads of positive things that we can do, mate. Really. Yeah. Very good. Right, guys. I hope you've um. I hope you found that interesting and informative and maybe it's filled in some blanks for you as well like we were saying you know a lot of people aren't aware of it yet they feel terrible this type of year so hopefully some of those tips well a the awareness piece but b some of the tips hopefully that has helped um, on that note guys do feel free get involved in the chat leave us some comments it's not about what we think we want to know what you think about it all as well um, so do get involved in the chat there are, of course, other ways to join in with the conversation as well, Toffee. Yeah, well, as we mentioned earlier, get yourself involved on the Yonder Mountain Facebook community as well. Plenty of like-minded folk on there as well. I think what, what we up about 140 or so. Give, give or take, give yeah, or take. Aye. Thriving, and it's full of positive, like-minded people who are sharing the best of the best, aren't they, really? Absolutely. Do you know what I found as well? Because people are chatting and trying to lift people's spirits. You know, even if you're feeling a bit down, you go onto the Yonder Mountain Facebook community. And actually, some of the comments, some of the pictures, it actually makes you feel yeah. a bit better as well. Yeah, yeah. So thanks to everybody who is a member of the Yonder Mountain Facebook community. It's really, really important stuff. Um, just a little bit of a, um, a snapshot for the future as well. Um, I deal a lot with um, charities um, inside and outside of work. Uh, and I've actually got a representative from one of the major mental health charities who's going to be uh, involved in the podcast at some point. So do stay tuned. Incidentally, guys... We've also got some big guests coming on the show as well. We'll allude to that in the next few weeks or so. But all I've got to say is elite athletes. Gold medalists. Gold medalist, mate. Unbelievable. Amongst other people as well, we've got some fantastic guests. So do stay tuned, ladies and gentlemen. So, Toffee, I think on that note, we're going to wrap up this episode of the Yonder Mountain podcast. We hope you've enjoyed it. Leave your comments, join the Facebook group, and we look forward to catching up with you on next week's podcast. So, it's a goodbye from me, and it's a goodbye from a good mate, an esteemed colleague, Mr. Toffeehead. Fantastic. Fantastic. <laughs>